Greatest headlines of the century. Dateline, New York City, January 1940. In a moment, the story. While the United States laughed and jeered, a man named Fritz Kuhn set about organizing a monster called the German-American Boom. The early 1930s found him and his followers assembling a small group of German-Americans into a membership of swaggering, arrogant goose-steppers who had dedicated themselves to spreading the new message of a reborn Germany. Only a few years were to elapse before the organization was to be exposed as an agent of a foreign enemy power. In outdoor camps throughout various sections of the country, Kuhn's Bund set about training their version of Hitler's stormtroopers. Like the Viennese House Painter's parent organization in Germany, Kuhn's Bundists preached the party line of hatred and prejudice. They waved the banner of anti-Semitism and shrieked out the praises of the Aryan supermen. Soon the little band of fanatics shed their swaddling clothes and became an organization of considerable power and wide membership. Rally after rally in New York City's Madison Square Garden found the followers of the U.S. Nazi party line whipping themselves into a frenzy of hate and power lust. And ever-present was Fritz Kuhn's specially trained goon squad. They were always on hand to see that any anti-boon demonstrators were dealt with promptly and efficiently. And such disturbances came with increasing frequency. The films you're watching now illustrate the thoroughness of the American stormtroopers. An anti-Nazi Jewish plumber tried to attack the Bund leader during one of his venomous speeches in 1938. The would-be assailant was fortunate to escape with his life. The collapse of the Bund came quickly on the heels of the imprisonment of its leader Kuhn for the misappropriation of the organization's funds. His successor Wilhelm Kunze and eight top aides were jailed a year later for violating New Jersey's race hatred law. They were sentenced to one-year terms in prison, but the law was later held to be unconstitutional. Congressman Martin Dyes of Texas led the bitter campaign against the Nazi Fifth Column organization. After his House Un-American Activities Committee's investigation, he revealed to the public the German-American Bund is an absolutely militarized organization patterned after the ruthlessly efficient military setup which characterizes Hitler's machine in Germany. After Pearl Harbor, the Bund went underground, disbanding as far as public appearances were concerned. Its threat to the welfare of the United States had been destroyed. Its death was mourned by a few and applauded by most. An organization that had flourished under the guise of constitutional free speech had died at the hands of the very democracy it had publicly scorned.